it's very hard to figure out how do you distribute that data when it's all scattered around in tables. But when you've got an aggregate-oriented database, you know the applications are going to use aggregates worth of information. So as a result, as long as you keep your aggregates together, as you move them across, or scatter them across the cluster, then you've got a reasonable way of uh, managing them and retaining them. Because you know people are always going to take a whole aggregate at a time. So it's very well suited for distribution, having an aggregate-oriented system. If you want to access your data in different styles, depending on what query you want to run or what screen you want to show, and you're always looking at your database in different ways, then you want to go relational. On the other hand, if most of your interaction with the database is through this notion of this single aggregate, then the aggregate-oriented database um, is more convenient. Now, when you've got your data in an aggregate-oriented database, you can rearrange it into different aggregates. And in fact, when you hear people talking about the role of MapReduce jobs and things like that, that's what they're talking about, this ability to organize it into these different units. But the important thing to remember here is the aggregate orientation is helping you in some scenarios and not hurting you in others. And it's the balance between the two scenarios that makes you decide whether an aggregate-oriented approach may be useful to you or not. They're not aggregate-oriented, but they also are um, schemaless. So again, a graph database allows you to attach any particular data um, with or without a schema. So I've talked about this schemaless property a few times. Um, it's worth saying a little bit more about it. The schemaless has some very interesting advantages. Um, if you've ever had to do custom fields in an application where you want to allow users to attach any information to the customer that they might want to store, trying to store that in a relational database with a fixed schema can be a right pain in the neck. You see things like custom field 1, custom field 2. Across that, or the... Uh, the